let's uh, take a look at light. The one thing that confounds people most of all. What are the suppositions that you have about light? Two of them are completely incorrect, and nothing confounds the average stupid human, which I meaning all humans, more than what the hell is light. Okay. Oh, by the way, if you ever really want to piss off a scientist, and by scientist, what I'm referring to in talking about a scientist is an idiot who thinks that the stuff that he was taught and the stuff that he teaches is incorrect and infallible. Every branch of science all throughout history has always been proven wrong 20, 30 years later, sometimes longer. That's irrefutable. Modern science has no idea what the hell light is. None. So let's talk about the first two misconceptions you have about light. Light is composed of photons. Really? That's atomism. If you don't know what the word atomism is, the ancient Greek Platonist destroyed atomism nearly 3,000 years ago. Look up the word atomism. So, light is certainly not particles. Well, light is electromagnetic waves. Really? No. There's really three things that people completely don't understand about light. Waves? Wave is not what something is, goddammit. A wave is what something does. This is a wave. Really? What's waving? My hand is waving. So what the hell is waving? Waves? Photons? Oh, and speed! Yeah, light has a speed. Uh, does light have a speed? Sure, it's 186,222 miles per second. Really? If you really want to stump a scientist, and by scientist, like I said, I mean a dumbass, who is very hubristic, Sure, you know, we got all sorts of advanced machines, computers, iPads, laptops. We know what the hell's going on. No, you don't. Light has no speed. Nothing emits light. It's a field perturbation. What do you mean, nothing emits light? You know, that, that lamp uh, illuminating your ugly face, that's emitting light. The sun is emitting light. No, it's a field perturbation. If you think that your lamp or the sun is emitting light, then you are as stupid as the dumbass who thinks that a person in the middle of a pond flapping their arms and creating waves in the water is actually emitting something. Pretty sure the person standing or floating in the middle of the pond, treading water in the middle of the pond, is not emitting anything. Are they? Are they? Are they emitting anything? No, they're not. They're setting up a perturbation in the medium that they are within, in this case, the water. So, you know, pretty sure that vacuum-sealed light bulb that's in your bathroom every time you flip on the switch, yeah, it's emitting light. No, it's using energy and setting up a field perturbation. Well, you know, the ether was denied, uh, you know, a long time ago. There's no such thing as the ether. Really? There were countless different ideations on the principle of the ether. You know, there are a lot of different ideations on a lot of different things. Denying or refuting X number of them is not refuting the principle. So, you really want to stump a scientist, and by scientist, like I said, I mean dumbass, ask him one question. You know, when uh, light passes through glass, it slows down by about 33 seconds. It goes from 186. Of course, light has no speed because there's nothing moving. It's a field perturbation. Okay? Even in the person in the lake or the pond that's actually flapping their arms in the water, the water itself is also not moving. It's going up and down like pistons, you know? Wave like piston like action. One piston that disrupts the field of the water next to it, vice versa, on and on. Even then, the water is not moving when you actually set up a piston. Transverse, remember everything works off of the right-hand rule? Light is a coaxial circuit, longitudinal pulse perturbation with transverse electrical magnetic, whether that's linear polarization or circular polarization. When light passes through glass, it slows down. There's nothing slowing down. From 186,000 miles per second to 124,000 miles per second, it slows down by about 33%. <clears throat> Yeah. Now, as far as the uh, pulse perturbation slowing down, that is true. However, nothing is traveling. The pulse perturbation is slowing down. Why is it slowing down? You see, Mother Nature is not a crack whore, a crazy cross-eyed hooker on crack. You know, nature is really simple. When we talk about nature and Mother Nature, we have to be very specific and refer to something most of you people don't know what it is. Natura naturans, okay? What's slowing down? Nothing's slowing down. Everything is capacitance, resistance, permeability, and permittivity. 
You see, this is a glass capacitor. I used to stick these on the power lines. You see how it's blowing out right here? Yeah, that wasn't because it was dropped. That was due to a lightning strike or actually when the power would go out back in the old days. And when they uh, uh, drop it back on again before they started adding some uh, additives to the glass so it wouldn't explode. Sometimes it would actually expo explode when the power would go back on. The power lines would have to go out. Like, oh, shit. i got to replace all these insulators. Now, glass is not only an insulator. It's a capacitor. Back in the old days before we had microwave-safe glass dishes to put in the microwave, you stick the glass dishes in the microwave and they'd explode. I was witness to that quite a few times. Well, that's due to the heat. You know, the heat caused the glass to... No, heat doesn't do that. Heat will cause glass to crack, but it doesn't cause it to explode. All that electromagnetic radiation in there bombarding the foods, also bombarding the glass. Now we have microwave-safe things. Well, we have microwave-safe glass is due to additives in the glass. The same thing lens manufacturers add to glass. They used to add radioactive thorium. Zeiss still uses lead. It's like, hey, gee, these lead, Zeiss lenses are really heavy. It's not because of the metal body. It's because that is leaded glass. Anybody that knows jack shit about glass knows what the hell leaded glass is when they see it. It has a very, very unique look. It's like... This grass is crystal. It's kind of like Swarovski crystal. You know what Swarovski crystal looks like? It doesn't look like this kind of glass. Okay? That crystal glass has got lead in it. That changes the dielectric permittivity of the light passing through it. So the reason why light slows down, and light doesn't slow down when it passes through glass, is due to the dielectric permittivity. Well, glass is an insulator, you know? It's not... No, glass is a capacitor. You don't believe me? Just type in Massachusetts Institute of Technology. Actually, type in MIT, the dissectable capacitor. It'll show you that glass is a capacitor. No, no, glass is an insulator. It's an insulator and a capacitor. Nothing is wholly a capacitor and nothing is wholly an insulator. There's no such thing as something that is absolutely a capacitor and absolutely an insulator. You know what that shit they call superconductivity? Using yttrium barium copper oxide disks and uh, samarium cobalt magnets or neodymium iron boron magnets? That's not superconductivity. That is insanely low magnetic permeability. Mm, magnetic permeability. See, I grew up with a uh, nitrogen, liquid nitrogen Dura flask. I still got a liquid nitrogen Dura flask in my basement. Yes, I do. I used to mess around with the superconductors when I was a young little freaking teenager. Superconductivity. That's not superconductivity. What that technically is is that the yttrium barium oxide copper disc cooled down to the temperature of liquid nitrogen becomes insanely low in its magnetic permeability. And therefore, the magnet levitates over top of it because the magnet is obviously uh, letting out a centrifugal divergent magnetic field. And then it is hovering over top of that disc, which has insanely low, it's basically like bulletproof to magnetism. When you cool down the yttrium barium copper oxide disc, it becomes basically nearly impervious to magnetism. That's magnetic permeability. So everything's capacitance, resistance, permeability, permittivity. Light slows down. Okay, let's hear the three bullshit premises every person is brain dead on in the world. I'm sorry if you think that's insulting, but it's the truth. Glass has, a, I mean, light has a speed. Light is a wave. Light is a particle, the photon. Those three, if aliens, like advanced aliens, were to land right now, they'd go, like, you people are unevolved dumbasses. I mean, the most fundamental principle in the universe, light, and of course there's no difference between light and gamma radiation. It's all electromagnetic radiation, right? Visible spectrum of what us humans can see is obviously a very, 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 very tiny part of the electromagnetic spectrum, right? All of that radiation is, of course, TEM, transverse electromagnetic, uh, transverse electromagnetic radiation, right? We're talking about visible light. It doesn't make any difference whether it's gamma radiation, infrared, visible light, radio waves. It's all the same shit at different frequencies. Remember how Nikola Tesla said the secret to understanding the universe is frequency and vibration? That's a direct quote from Nikola Tesla. Exactly right. So, light is no photo. There's no such thing as a photon. Completely uh, arbitrary concept with no basis in reality. There is absolutely zero, zero evidence, nor will there ever be, for the notion that light has a photon in it. You know, it's photons, photons emitting from the... Nothing emits light. That's a field perturbation. If you think that somebody in the middle of the pond flapping their arms in the middle of the water is emitting something, you're an idiot. But that's okay. Everybody else is an idiot, too. Light has a speed. Light is waves. Waves of what? Wave is not what something is. A wave is what something does, damn it! There's no such thing as wave as a principle. 
Wave is not a principle, nor is space. Space has no properties. Quote Nikola Tesla. Nikola Tesla was right. Space has no properties. What is waving? Light is a wave. A wave of what, damn it? I love it when people say waves. I go, wave of what? You idiot. Wave of what? A wave of what? Mmm, yeah. A wave of what? Exactly. People have actually ridiculed me endlessly, and I don't know where they get this crap from. Maybe they just don't have any education at all, or they never study this stuff, which is perfectly fine. They say, I talk about light having capacitance. Well, energy equals Planck's constant times the frequency. I mean, even the idiot scientists know that. I mean, like, uh, uh, um, uh, the furthest end of the spectrum that humans can see, like uh, purple light, blue end light, that's 2.95 EV volts. Blue light, 2.64 EV volts, 2.34 EV volts for green. Orange is 2.0 EV volts. Red light um, is 1.77 EV volts. Yes, light has a capacitance. Given an X spatial sector of transverse electrical magnetic perturbation, and light is not EM solely, it is a coaxial circuit, a longitudinal pulse perturbation, which is where the idea of the photon came from. Okay, pulse perturbation. That's where the bullshit of the photon came from. There's no such thing as a photon particle. That is pure, rank, disgusting atomism. Mother Nature doesn't have a bag of magic particles, you know. Quantum mechanics and modern science, which is a sick, disgusting cult, they hate to be challenged, is a cult of bumping particles. That's what it should be called, the religion of BP, bumping particles. They think that's exactly what the universe... The universe, everything is fields, and fields are not particles. That is what pisses them off. And science has never fucking defined a field. Ever. Science has never, ever defined a field. Go ask a scientist what the field is. Like, well, they'll point to you for Maxwellian field equation. Well, the Maxwellian field equations never define a field. They only tell you the result of a field, given a vector over a certain period of time, what its resultant effect is. No branch of science has ever defined a field. Waves, sure, it's electromagnetic wa wave of what, damn it? It's a field. A field has no quantity. Oh, let's see. What, what happens when you take the word quantity and extrapolate it? Oh, you end up with the word quantum, quantum mechanics. That is a cult of atomism. Um, now, here's something really, really funny. Everybody keeps pointing me to these goofy-ass videos. They're called the Primer Fields. Okay, there's video one, two, and three. I've known about these videos for ages. Have you seen the video of the Primer Fields? Have you seen the videos of the Primer Fields? Have you seen the video of the Primer Fields? It's like, yeah, I've seen them. They're very, very beautiful videos. Very high production value videos. They're quite impressive for stupid people. Now, I'm going to give you a quote off of two of those, uh, uh, two quotes from the video, which is the third video on light, the dumbest crap I've ever, ever seen in my life. Very, very, very dumb. It talks about light actually passing through glass and how it re so that's where you'll stump a scientist. Ask a scientist, and they're all morons, how light re-accelerates, nothing's moving again, remember? It's a field perturbation. but how light re-accelerates after it leaves the glass. They have no idea. They'll point you to something like, you don't need to go read this book. You know, you're just not smart enough to read this shit. You know, you go, go read the. That's what they'll tell you because they don't know. And it's okay not to know. But don't pretend you knew no shit when you don't know shit. They'll say, oh, and this is the, from the video, uh, the, the, uh, the Primer Fields. I'll give you an exact quote. And this is some really insane stupidity. Those videos are very pretty, by the way. They really impress stupid people that like high production value videos. The photon, after it leaves the glass, accelerates back to full light speed as it exacts. Let's read that quote again, and let's realize how stupid that is. The photons, and of course there's no such thing as a photon. The light, it should say light, but it says photons accelerates back to full light speed as it... See, when light uh, perturbation hits the glass, it slows down by about 33%. Hardcore undeniable fact. Then it says, oh, the, the photons accelerate after it leaves... Back to full light speed. Really? So, in other words, uh, the light has some, like, extra gas in there. It's like, you know, light's driving along in a car. Beep, beep. And then the light expends some energy. It's like, we're leaving the glass. We're going to re-accelerate. So, using the word accelerate. To accelerate means you're expending energy. <laughs> oh, my God. Do you understand how stupid that is? That's saying, that is the dumbest crap absolutely imaginable. Light re-accelerates after it leaves. It reaccelerates. Light is not moving. There's no such thing as a photon. And the, the premise, the very idea 
that something is reaccelerating. In other words, it's expending, it's expending its own energy after it's leaving the gas. Is you know that's ridiculous. Light automatically knows once it enters the glass, it's going to slow down. It's going to put on the brakes. <laughs> but once it leaves the glass, it's going to put on the gas. Do you understand how stupid that sounds? This is what passes as science? Light accelerates after it leaves the glass. Really? Where is this imaginary energy coming from that it's able to reaccelerate itself back up again? Light is not a speed, it's a rate of induction, kitties. There's no such thing as a wave. A wave is not what something is, a wave is what something does. There's no such goddamn thing as a photon particle. Waves, it has no speed. Light is not a speed, it's a rate of induction. Everything is capacitance, resistance, permeability, and permittivity. Ridiculousness! Let's give another quote from the, 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 the Primer Fields, video 3, which is on light. Uh, the light exits the glass and the compression fields rebound. And this is the exact wording from the video. And it pushes the photons away from the glass. In other words, now they give a separate explanation, contrary to their other explanations. So they're even contradicting themselves. They're saying, well, once light leaves, it's kind of like something hitting a trampoline. And it just like rebounds, like wah, it reaccelerates. Do you know how stupid that sounds? I mean, incredibly stupid. Here's another thing, too. Now, uh, higher capacitance light, like blue light, purple light, green light, since it has a smaller uh, spatial footprint, you know, the wavelength is smaller, the set, it has higher capacitance. That's an absolute fact. Energy equals new times frequency. It should be refracted less since its spatial footprint is much smaller, but the exact opposite happens. That's because everything is capacitance, resistance, permeability, and permittivity. Even though red light is spatially much bigger light, it is actually refracted less as it passes through the glass and out of it. Well, that doesn't make any sense with either modern science or these uh, crazy videos that people are so enamored with. There is no electromagnetic compression inside the medium. Rather, this is electromagnetic retardation. It's called EMR. There's a huge book full of math on it written by Dr. Oleg D. Jefeminko. Due to the given magnetic and dielectric magnetic permeability and dielectric permittivity of the glass. What the hell do you think the glass is merely refractive index based upon the glass only? Well, if you add lead to it, it changes the refractive index. If you add radioactive thorium, it changes. You add lanthanum or niobium dioxide, all these various additives it change. That is it's why do you think it changes the refractive index of the glass? Why the hell? Oh, I don't know. You stick that shit in the glass, it just changes how it bends the light. Yeah, and why? You know? Why? Why does it change it? Huh? You're not changing the front or rear curvature of the glass. You're not making it thicker or anything like that. You're changing the magnetic permeability and the dielectric permittivity of the field perturbation, i.e. light, as it passes through the glass. Gee, that sounds really simple. Yes, there's no such thing as a photon. There's no such thing as a speed of light. And there's no such thing as a wave, because a wave is not what something is. A wave is what something does. Science is brain dead. If you like this video, you can drop me a buck or two. Tell me to jump off a cliff. Whatever makes you happy. Okay? Thanks for watching. Bye.